So following on from the previous example, we're going to now look at this curve here. We're going to see what the first and second derivatives look like, the gradient function of this curve, and then its gradient function. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw uh, some axes directly underneath so we can kind of see how things are matching up. So this will be the graph of f prime, the gradient function of this curve. Okay, so what we can see is that at minus 3, we have a stationary point, because that's when the gradient function will be 0. And so that will be precisely where the gradient function crosses the x-axis. Okay? In a similar way, we've got another stationary point at 0. So that means we're going to have the gradient function crossing 0 as well. OK, so let's see what happens next then. So what we've got here, uh, to the left of minus 3, we've got the curve having a negative gradient approaching minus 3. OK, so we start off with a negative gradient. We're approaching minus 3, OK, and that's where we're going to be crossing through the x-axis for the gradient function. And then, for this part of the curve, we've got the curve increasing in gradient, okay, in a positive gradient, and it's going to reach this maximum point, and then it's going to start turning again. So the maximum kind of looks like somewhere up here. So probably looks some, so something like this, okay. So it reaches a maximum and then starts to decrease again to down to zero. So that's that point there. And then we've got this negative gradient, okay? And what happens now is it's tending towards this horizontal asymptote. So how do we deal with that? Well, it's got negative gradient throughout, but what you'll notice is that it gets to a point where it's going uh, negative gradient, and it reaches a maximum negative gradient, and then it starts to kind of shallow out, effectively, and the gradient is getting closer and closer and closer to just being zero. So there must be a point where the gradient of the curve is at its maximum negative amount, and then it starts to slow down, and it tends towards zero. So in other words, the uh, x-axis becomes a horizontal asymptote for this. And this is the true of all horizontal asymptotes for curves of your original function. Um, because they are always flattening out to where the gradient will be zero, if you have a horizontal asymptote for your original function, then the gradient function will be having a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. Okay? at y equals 0, or f prime is 0. So, um, we have this point here. So there's this point up here that's matching this kind of maximum gradient before it kind of turns. That's its point of inflection, OK? And we're also having this point of inflection here. There's a point on this curve where they get reach maximum uh, gradient, and then it kind of shallows out again. OK, so that's our situation for the, the gradient function of f. Now, for the gradient function of f prime, let's see what we've got. Well, the gradient function of f pr double prime uh, will go through 0 at this point here, where this curve is stationary. So. If I continue that dashed line down, okay, so we're going to cross through the x-axis there, and we've got another stationary point here, so that's also going to be another point where it crosses through the x-axis. Now, uh, we've got a negative gradient, okay, to the left of that stationary point, we've got, sorry, a positive gradient, positive gradient because we're going in that increasing direction. And it's slowing down, so it's going to go through zero eventually. So positive gradient, it's slowing down, goes through zero, 
and then we get this negative gradient and there's going to be because it turns there's a point of inflection here okay so there is a point where it reaches its maximum negative gradient and then shallows off again to zero okay so it's going to be coming through here and then to zero okay so there is this stay this uh, point of inflection somewhere there and that matches up with that point there and then we go into positive gradient but there's also another point of inflection here where it starts to slow down again increases speeds then slows down that point is the point of inflection and the gradient of that curve is getting closer and closer to zero so it's going to look something like this okay so it's positive there is a point of inflection here which will match up with where that is getting a stationary curve, a stationary point okay so that's what the uh, gradient function of the gradient function would look like and once again uh, identifying the points of inflection for your original curve da, 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 follow the lines down it is when the second derivative is zero okay where it's crossing the x-axis and the stationary points are when the gradient function the first derivative is zero okay so that's how we're able to identify those points later on in the course